Good morning, good morning, good morning to you on this Thursday morning, this tenacious Thursday. We're glad to be with you on this morning. Um, as you're coming in, please, please, if you don't mind saying good morning to each other. Also share this with others as well. Press your share button, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, share this with others so that they too can join in with you or listen at a later time. We're glad to be with you again for our devotional supplement. Um, we're going to um, focus on mental health today. A little bit of that was discussed on yesterday with Pastor Goodlow. Um, so we wanna carry over um, with that theme and concept today on our Tenacious Thursday. Glad to have you, glad to be with you. Um, just before we bring our pastor in, the link that you see there on on your screen or at the bottom of your screen is a link to a free screening so go to that link it'll be up throughout the duration of our time today um, definitely go to that link and you can have a free screening regarding anxiety depression many other mental health challenges that are plaguing our community so with that we'll welcome you again bring our pastor in We'll do a little bit of a roll call. Glad to have you all this morning with us. Pastor Goodlow, how are you, sir? I'm doing well. Uh, Elder Woods, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. Doing great. All right. Great, great. You might have to put the names up on the screen for me this morning. All right. Uh, I don't seem to be able to get it on my phone. Okay. Get the link on my phone. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, no, that's last week. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't see this. I can't get today's. All right. But good morning to everyone. We're glad you're joining us this morning on our Tenacious Thursday. I see Sister Nisi, Kimberlyn Powell. Good morning. Good morning. My cousin, Betty Davis Harris, Huntsville, Alabama. Good morning. All right. Renee Dabney, Las Vegas. All right, Renee, we missed you yesterday with the Las Vegas uh, family that came to New Orleans. Uh, we were looking to see you, but hopefully you'll be with them on the next time. All right, Brother Daryl Dabney, good morning, good morning. All right, Daryl is from Las Vegas also. All right, Sister Diana Jackson. All right. All right, Brother Charles Yancey. This is the one of the young men that was here yesterday with the Las Vegas group. Mm. Uh, we got a chance to go out on a cruise with them, a steamboat, the Steamboat Natchez cruise. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, uh, they're traveling cross country mm. on a train, Amtrak. Amtrak. Uh, oh, wow. The country uh, crew, uh, tour. Mm. All right. Good morning, my sister Stella Walker, Huntsville, Alabama. Brother Frederick McLean, Durham, North Carolina. <laughs> sister Brenda Clark. Good morning, Sister Clark. All right. Another young lady that was celebrates, uh, Sister Hodges, celebrated her birthday yesterday. Oh, wow. Okay. And uh, uh, since she's not ashamed to tell her age, and she shared with us, the Lord has blessed her with 82 years. Amen. And on her 80, uh, 82nd birthday, she's traveling around the country. Mm. You know she's in good health. Yes. And got yes. a sound mind. Mm -hmm. Traveling on a train. Amtrak. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. From Las Vegas all the way uh, down here to New Orleans, then back up to D.C., and then they go on Chicago and, and then back to Seattle and back to California. Mm. They're going around the United States. Mm -hmm. All right, Sister Esther Holmes, good morning. Good morning. All right, Sister Bridget uh, Washington Patman, uh, Mississippi. Sis, my sister Liz, Oklahoma. Sister Stephanie Francois. All right, right here. Sister Janie Lewis, Las Vegas. Good morning, good morning. Good to see you this morning. Sister Gail Grant. All right. All right, good to see you all. Sister G. Jane on this tenacious Thursday. 
We're almost at the end of the week, another week. Time seems to be moving rapidly. Mm -hmm. All right, but that's a good thing. The faster the move, the closer we get to the second coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right, Sister Deborah Gaines, good to see you this morning. Hope all is well with you. Hope everybody had a good nice rest while you come in. Coming in, uh, all right, let's see Brother Trenton Col Coleman, Seattle, Washington. All right, Brother Trenton. Amen. All right, we'll be up your way, I think, in August for Janine's wedding. All right. All right, while you're coming in, if you have a share button, invite button, push your share button, invite button, invite someone to join us this morning. Share the blessing with somebody else. All right, good right. morning so, to you. Was that Grace Jackson? Yes. All mm -hmm. right. Sister Grace. Amazing Grace. All right, Sister Latrice Michaela. Good morning, Brother Tony Daria, Tobago. All right, very quickly as you're coming in, again, if you join us a little bit later this morning the link that you see on the screen is a free mental health screening link um definitely jot that down and um share that with others during um not only during this month but anytime you feel comfortable that link will take you to a list of different screenings that you can participate in get some more information there's no official diagnosis but it will give you some information regarding different mental health concerns so we'll keep that link up for today and i hope that you um if you if you feel comfortable go for it if you feel comfortable sharing definitely definitely share that link with others as well all right so it's veronica dixon mobile alabama all right ashley lewis from las vegas but here in uh, new orleans now all right faithful dub Blessings, blessings, saints of the true living God. Praying for each and every one. Thank you, faithful. You got a good name. Faithful. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you for being faithful to your name, faithful. All right. Sister Marilyn Harrell, Chicago. All right. Uh, if we can get the prayer line family in, we'll get ready to get started this morning. So this morning, we want to say good morning to the prayer line family. Good morning, prayer line. Good morning. We're going to mute you. We're going to mute you, and we will unmute you at the end. Good to see you. Good to hear your voice this morning. Hope all is well. Hope you had a good night's rest last night, and you're ready for this tenacious Thursday. We're almost at Fitness Friday, so we are excited. Uh, before I... Uh, Turn All things over to Elder Woods. I'd like to make uh, just a few themselves. quick announcements. Uh, we have two funerals coming up, and we ask that you pray for the families of the deceased. Uh, 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 Patrice Franklin's family, Brother Leon Franklin and his son and daughter. Uh, uh, just keep them in your prayers. The funeral will be Tuesday, May 17th at 10 a.m., at the old Franklin Avenue Baptist Church, the place where we're worshiping right now. So that's gonna be uh, next Tuesday, May 17th, 10, 10 a.m. All right, also Brother Irvin Wilson, one of the gentlemen that was attending the Ephesus Church, uh, his, his funeral will be Friday, May the 20th at, I think it's 10 a.m. I would check to double check to make sure but 10 a.m., uh, that's Friday. All right, and May 14th, we're having our communion this Sabbath. If you don't have your communion juice and bread, you can pick it up. If you plan on doing virtual, pick it up early Sabbath morning around 9.30, 10 o'clock. Uh, also, May 20th, 20, 21st, we're having our youth rally. Uh, so we want to um, continue to pray that God will bless. We want to uh, just have a weekend where we focus on our young people, and we like to invite all the young people to come out and participate 
so we can get back on track. COVID has kind of set us back a little bit, but that's okay. We say a setback is a set up for a comeback. So we're looking forward to that day. All right. So, um, and we have a few prayer requests. We're praying for the Reset Revival. They're in decision time. Uh, yeah, I went to the uh, Revival last night. Several people took their stand for baptism. So we want to celebrate that and pray as they make their appeal on tomorrow night and this coming Sabbath, uh, that more souls will join and unite with them in the uh, uh, baptism celebration this weekend. All right, let's... Uh, pray this morning. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for all that you have done. We thank you for what you're doing. And uh, we just pray that you would continue to bless us on this tenacious Thursday. Lord, you are a tenacious God. You're a God who holds on to us. You're a God who's not willing to let us go. And you are tenacious about uh, 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 bringing us and saving us and, and, and bringing us into your kingdom. So I pray that as you have been tenacious in uh, reaching out, seeking us, may we be tenacious in our seeking you and our holding on to you once you bring us into your family. So bless us, Lord. And Lord, we want to lift up those uh, prayer requests. We lift, lift up Elder and Sister Woods. We lift up uh, uh our Facebook uh, family, we lift up those who are on the prayer line. We lift up those, uh, my, my cousin Kay, who's having a GI, upper GI procedure this morning. We lift up Pastor Wegar uh, and his recovery from his eye surgery. We pray that it would go well and may he have a good and a full recovery. We lift up my sister Shelby Jean. We pray that as she goes through this treatment, this cancer treatment, that you were blessed, Lord. And Lord, we're just asking for blessing. We're asking that the cancer will be eradicated from her body. We're asking that you will bring healing to her body, mind, spirit, and soul, Lord. Heal her. And Lord, we want to lift up these families who have lost loved ones. We lift up the Franklin family, Brother Leon, his son and daughter. We pray that you would put, uh, wrap your loving arms of comfort around them. We lift up Brother uh, uh, Urban uh, Wilson's family, Lord, those, uh, his loved ones, we pray you would comfort them. We also want to lift up the Smith family uh, during this time of bereavement. Lord, we pray that you would comfort these families. And Lord, we just pray that as we go throughout this day, may we keep our eyes stayed on you and may we trust you with all of our hearts and not lean to our own understanding, but may we continue to walk with you all the days of our lives. And Lord, this morning, as uh, Elder Woods uh, bring a word, a thought uh, on mental health, I pray you will speak through him, speak to us. And we pray that we will gain something that will help us in our walk with you to be stronger, to be more dedicated, more faithful, more committed to you than ever before. Lord, we ask for the forgiveness of our sins. We ask that you cleanse us from all unrighteousness and let none, nothing that uh, would be un Unplea uh, un nothing that would be unpleasing to you uh, be in our hearts and our minds and our thoughts this morning. So purge our hearts, our minds, and our thoughts, Lord, that we might be focused on you and your goodness, your love, and your mercy. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. At this time, we're going to have our presentation by none other than our co-host, Elder Frazier Woods, who will be sharing with you uh, further, going a little deeper and to the thoughts that we're sharing about mental health as we focus on mental health for the month of May. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Elder. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Goodlow. Um, good morning again to you all. Uh, Ephesus family, I believe we can say Ephesus, Ephesus family. Um, I'm going to put that link there um, for you. Again, this is a link to a free screening. You don't have to make an appointment or anything, you can go to that website, answer a few questions regarding anxiety, depression, um, any other mental health concerns and get the information that you need to possibly follow up with a mental health professional on those concerns. So today um, I'll share with you a little bit on anxiety. We talked a good bit about um, our scripture yesterday, 1 Peter 5, 7, 1 Peter 5, 7. Um, was our scripture that
that we used on yesterday. I want to make sure. Yes, I have the right one. So first Peter five, seven from the easy reading version says, if you have any kind of trouble in your mind, give it to God. God has promised to take care of you. Again, that's first Peter five, seven from the easy reading version. If you have any kind of trouble in your mind, give it to God. God has promised to take care of you. That is a promise that we can hold true to um, each and every day of our life. So as we get started today, um, we're going to, or I'm going to share with you an article that I found um, by a individual by the name of Melissa Tumeno. Um, she's known as a, a passionate minister. and She kind of gave us six tools or six steps on how to cast our cares upon God. The text says, um, casting all your cares upon him for he cares for you. She's written an article on how you and I can cast our cares upon God. So if you're following along with me, if you're tracking along with me, type in the chat six ways, six ways. That'll let me know that you can hear me good. That'll let me know that you're ready for how we can move forward in casting our cares upon God. It's good to know that we can do it. It's good to know that God is available to, to receive our cares and concerns, but it's something else to know how to cast our cares upon God. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Six ways, six ways to talk or six ways to cast our cares upon God. All right, I see that you are in the chat. You're waiting there for me. So the first way is taking thoughts captive. I'm going to put the scripture on the screen, taking thoughts captive. This is your first way to cast your care upon God. And that's taking thoughts captive. Our scripture is 2 Corinthians 10, 2 Corinthians 10 verses 4 and 5. 2 Corinthians 10 verses 4 and 5 says, let me make sure I have the right scripture. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4 and 5 says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity, into the obedience of Christ. That last part, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So one of the examples that she gives when we're taking our thoughts captive is this, whatever that negative thought is or whatever that distressing thought is, verbalize that thought, verbalize a biblical truth, and then verbalize your decision to believe what God said. All right, I'll go through that again. Verbalize that negative thought, that distressing thought, verbalize a, a biblical truth, a promise, a psalm, something that's encouraging to you, and then verbalize that you're going to believe what God has said. This is one, the first way that we can take care or take our thoughts captive. This is the first way that we can cast our cares upon God. Six ways to cast your cares upon God. The first way is to take our thoughts captive. And your scripture there is 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. Our second way our second way is found in Philippians 4, 6 to 7. This is a familiar text for many of us. Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. I'm sorry, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So our second way is prayer. Our first way, taking thoughts captive. Our second way is prayer based on Philippians 4, 6 through 7. She writes in her article that prayer invites God to bring his will into the situation you are dealing with and to provide you with a solution. All right, so there's two parts to that. Number, number one, prayer invites God 
to bring his will into your situation that you're dealing with. That's the first part. The second part is there's a solution that God brings with him as well. God is not just a God who listens and who understands and who's ready to support us, but he's a God of solutions. He's a God that will encourage us, that will lead us, that will direct us to finding a solution to the concern that we're having. So our first way, taking thoughts captive. Our second way, prayer, based on Philippians chapter four, verse six and seven. We're gonna move right along to number three, based on the scripture, Proverbs, excuse me, let me make sure I get it straight, straight here. Proverbs 12, 25, Proverbs 12, 25. This is our third scripture heading into our third way that we can cast our cares upon God. Proverbs chapter 12. I believe I have the wrong scripture. Hold on just one second. Proverbs 12. Let me see where we are. I'm sorry, the right scripture, wrong book. Proverbs 12, 25. Proverbs 12, 25 says, anxiety in the heart of man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. I'll say that again. Proverbs 12, 25 says, anxiety in the heart of man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. Our third way is listening to positive messages listening to positive messages. Our first way that we can cast our cares upon God is taking thoughts captive. Our second way to cast our cares upon God is to pray. Now the third way to cast our cares upon God is to listen to positive messages. She writes that we can talk to friends who are positive and encourage us with their words. Even listening to worship music can help. The last thing that you and I need when we're anxious, when we're stressed, when we're frustrated is to be in conversation with someone else who's going to make us feel worse. I know you've probably experienced that, unfortunately, though, again, the worst thing that you can do when you're feeling anxious and frustrated is to be paired with someone in conversation with someone who's going to make you feel worse than you started. It's important for us to do this third way, to practice this third way, to, to listen to positive messages. That might be a sermon. It might be serving someone. It might be positive and uplifting music. It might just be going into your prayer closet or taking a walk and talking to God. But make sure you listen to positive messages. We're going to go straight to number four, and we're going to use our scripture found in Psalms 119.28. Psalms 119, verse 28. We're talking about the six ways that we can cast our cares upon God. Psalms 119, 28. There the Bible says, my soul melts from heaviness. Strengthen me according to your word. Psalms 119, 28 says, my soul melts from heaviness. Strengthen me according to your word. So our fourth way to cast our cares upon God is to get into the word of God. Get into the word of God. She writes in her article that God speaks to us through his word and shows us his will for our situations. When we're anxious, when we're frustrated, when we're out of sorts, don't know where to go, she's saying that one way that we can cast our cares upon God is to get into the word of God. Have a handful of promises that you quote that will encourage you. Remind yourself of the different stories that we see in the Bible where people were down and out. They felt out of sorts, but God came through for them. These stories, these scriptures are there to encourage us when we're not feeling at our very best. So again, six ways, six ways to cast your care upon God. First, taking your thoughts captive. Second, prayer. Third, listening to positive messages. Fourth, getting into the word of God. Now, now we're here at number five based on James chapter one, verse five. James one, five tells us about God's wisdom. It says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God 
who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given him. God is asking us to seek him for wisdom. And that's our fifth way that we can cast our care upon God is to ask God for wisdom. She writes in her article, remember our human wisdom is limited in understanding the spiritual side of our situations and God's wisdom will enlighten or open our eyes to his truth. She's simply saying that we're we're finite individuals and cannot possibly fathom or understand what God is doing behind the scenes spiritually. So she's encouraging us that we connect with God in such a way that we ask him for wisdom and discernment in those various trials that we're experiencing, whether it's with the church, whether it's with your family, whether it's with your job or whether it's something personally that we're struggling with. She's encouraging us to seek God for wisdom. Finally, number six, well, not yet because we can't end on six. We have to end on seven. The sixth way that she gives is based on 1 John 4.18. 1 John 4.18 is the sixth way. 1 John 4.18 tells us, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Again, 1 John 4, 18 is our sixth way. Don't give in to fear. Don't give in to fear. Way number one, that we can cast our cares upon God, taking thoughts captive. Number two, prayer. Number three, listening to positive messages. Number four, getting into God's word. Number five, asking God for wisdom. And number six, don't give in to fear. She writes in her article that we waste days of our lives when we, when our mind is filled with cares that should be in the Lord's hands. I'll say that again. She says that we waste days of our lives when our minds are filled with cares that should be in the Lord's hands. Just before we close, I want you to pause and think for a second. Are you thinking about something? Are you carrying something? that should be in God's hands. Mm -hmm. Are you thinking about something? Are you worried about something? Are you anxious about something that is better suited to be in God's hands? And to be honest with you, all of it should be in God's hands. We read it in the text, cast all your cares upon God for he cares for you. And lastly, number seven, just before we bring Pastor Goodlow in, that seventh way that I'm going to add is seeking professional help. Um, as, as a counselor, it is valuable. Is a, it is a valuable resource to speak to someone who doesn't have any stake in your life, who doesn't have a relationship with you, who, who doesn't know you at all. I can tell you from experience back here on this couch, in this room, there have been a number of individuals that I've counseled with who are number one, thankful for this space where they can just speak and unload their cares and concerns to someone that has no stake in their life, to someone who, who is not intricately known to them. And sometimes it's just the fact that they can have the space to share. It's not so much the, the, the resources that we're providing as clinicians, it's just being able to sit down and speak without being judged, without being questioned, uh, whether or not their, their story is true or not, um, but seeking professional help, whether that's from a Christian counselor or just a, a general practitioner, um, seek, seek professional help. And as you're doing that, there are a number of options. There's people that you can speak with in their office. There are a number of counseling and therapy apps that are available for those of you that are a little bit more busy. There are resources available, available both spiritual and professionally that we as Christians should not only tap into ourselves, but share with others. So again, as a recap, there are six ways that Melissa tells us that we can cast our cares upon God. Number one, taking our thoughts captive taking our thoughts captive. Number two, prayer. Number three, listening to positive messages. 
Number four, asking God for wisdom. I'm sorry, number four, getting into the Bible. Number five, asking God for wisdom. Number six, don't give in to fear. And I added one on my own, and that's seeking professional counsel. I'm going to put that link on the screen now for the free mental health screening. We're going to bring Pastor Goodlow in here. Pastor Goodlow in in just a second. Um, mental Health Awareness Month is the month of May. And today, for the last two days, we've been focusing on anxiety. My encouragement to you both professionally and as a, as a leader in the church, find the resources that you need, use them and share them with others. There's no reason for any of us, for any of us to struggle with any concerns that we have, whether it's spiritual or mental health. There are a number of resources that are available to us and we need to ask God to push us to encourage us to take advantage of those resources that are available. All right, Pastor. I was on mute. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, Elder Wood. Thanks for your profound, informative information. Um, one of the things that uh, targeted my heart was the fact that we as a people are not used to going to therapists. And, mm -hmm. and, and what you said was seeking a person who doesn't know you, who would be non, well, I'm at it, who would be non-biased, mm -hmm. I think will help a person, uh, our people <laughs> to, um, to make that decision. Because, you know, once that click your mind, okay, you won't be talking to somebody that will take sides. A lot of times mm -hmm. people that know that you're familiar with, the other person may think, well, they're taking sides. But mm -hmm. if you're talking to someone who doesn't know you and, and has no reason to even think to take sides, but will tell you what's right and what's wrong or the best way or the right mm -hmm. way or better way. And so that's what came in my mind. And, and that's so, so, so needed in our community is to let people know that you're not crazy. Mm -hmm. It would just make your life better. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Preach. We appreciate that. Uh, those words. And like my wife say, said, sometimes it's a stigma, you know, uh, mm -hmm. a negative thoughts uh, when people think about professional counseling. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have to understand that there are people who have been trained, yes. uh, have uh, learned how to help you process mm -hmm. things in life. There's nothing wrong with uh, seeking out a professional counseling. I have taken advantage of that myself. It's been a blessing to me. The only thing I would add to that, I suggest, and mm -hmm. this is just a personal recommendation, yeah. when individuals uh, are looking for a counselor, professional counselor, mm -hmm. uh, Seek a person of faith, mm -hmm. a person that believe in God, you know, because I've I've uh, seen some counselors who don't have the same mindset, mm -hmm. uh, perspective on life, and mm -hmm. and as far as their faith in God, who uh, you know, like like um, for example, there are some counselors who don't believe that uh, divorce, you know, they believe you could get divorced for anything, you mm -hmm. know, they don't try mm -hmm. to build. Standard, you know, like uh, 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 infidelity, uh, uh, yeah. abuse, and what have you. But mm -hmm. if you have a little misunderstandings, mm -hmm. they might, yeah, yeah, what they call incompatibility. You know, yeah. they might suggest you divorce, you know, mm -hmm. over small things, small issues. You know, mm -hmm. uh, some people might counsel you to uh, go into marriage with a prenuptial agreement, with mm -hmm. an agreement already in place. So, you know, because mm -hmm. some people come together. And say one's got a lot of money, the other don't have a lot of money. They might mm -hmm. get counsel. A person might counsel them. Well, do a prenup agreement. You mm -hmm. know. Uh, so, so that's all my my only advice is seek yeah. somebody, a person of faith, a person who believes in God and who kind of have some, uh, uh, Bible uh, yeah, Bible basis mm -hmm. for their counsel. All you. right, but thank yeah. you again. We appreciate it and. Uh, that line that you gave us this morning, uh, the one you got on the screen now, mm -hmm. is, that, is that all free services? Yeah, That's yeah. You cool. can you can go to that lot, go to that website, any time of the year. 
there's a free screening on anxiety, depression, PTSD, and maybe seven or eight other different categories. Um, oh, okay. You'll click, once you get to that website, you'll click the one that you feel most comfortable using. And then it'll be like a survey or a questionnaire. At the end of it, you'll get your results and they'll probably, based on the results, say, hey, you might need to seek professional help or mm -hmm. here are some things that you can do to make the distress or anxiety kind of decrease. So it's a, I've used it before just to get familiar with it. It's awesome. It's an awesome tool. Okay. Amen. Yeah. We'll check it out. All right. Very, very quickly. I'm glad that you shared your the piece about uh, seeking professional help, Pastor. I think it's when, when, when you're shopping for a car, you're going to shop around. And my encouragement for anyone who's seeking professional counseling, shop around, know what you're looking for. If it's a professional Christian counselor, go for it. This is one story. This is I'm, I'm very, very Christian in my beliefs. I'm at a Jesuit university and I've had conversations with a student who is Muslim and a conversation with a student who is Christian. So being able to be flexible in what I practice and not have it have to mean anything in terms of the religious foundation is a unique experience. But the principles are still there. And I agree with you, Pastor. Some counselors, whether they're Christian or not, they're they're going to push you one way or another. And that's not what we're trained to do. We're trained to really see what that concern is, see what your goals are and help you get to those goals. So um, thank you for sharing that. And yeah, yeah, let's let's wrap up with that. Anything else from you, Pastor? No, no, that's all. All right. Let's close. Let's close. Father in heaven, we thank you for your love, your grace and your mercy. We thank you for the insights that were shared this morning. We thank you for Melissa, who's written this article and her insights as well. We pray that you keep us mindful of how available you are to us and also mindful of the resources that are available to us, not only spiritually, but in our psychological health as well. So God, encourage us, uh, prick our hearts where we need to make a move in, in what we've heard today. But we're mindful again for the encouragement that you are with us no matter what we're dealing with. We're thankful again also for Pastor and Sister Goodlow as they continue to lead out. Bless and keep them as well. As we move throughout the rest of our day, cause us to draw closer to you. We thank you for the gift of salvation and we pray that we see you in peace when you come. In your son's strong name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right. We appreciate that. All right. All right. Be blessed. Y'all have a the tenacious Thursday and we'll see you tomorrow morning for our Fitness Friday. Amen. Amen. Amen.